Good morning. It's uh, <clears throat> February the, what is it, um, 17th? Rather gray day. It's a Friday and I'm trying to get back to my uh, tradition of walking around the lake on Friday. Um, which I haven't done now for about a month for one reason or another. Oh, we might get some sun. I thought it was completely gray, but actually we might get a little sun over there in the east as it continues to brighten. Watch out for the ice, I'm sure, all the way around the lake. It's only minus four, so I'm wearing my lighter jacket, which is nice. Although it's going to be cold again next week, but we do get a couple of more warmish days here before that happens. Yes, there was a, you may have noticed, I don't know if it even registered or not, but there was a momentary blip as I started this and then quickly quit it again because I realized I was missing a glove. <laughs> I wasn't going to walk around the lake with only one glove, so I had to go back inside to get it. When I get home, it'll be uh, another scene in the musical I'm writing, and uh, then I've got a big desktop publishing job. The annual report of the uh, Pharmaceut Pharmacy Association of Saskatchewan, which I've been hired to produce. I don't have to do any writing, everything's provided, I'm just uh, laying it out. So I made good progress on it, but I got to work more on it today. Don't know if I'll finish it today. Monday, I have to have it finished, so I want to get a good chunk of it done today. Other publishing things, uh, Shadow Paw Press, upcoming title is The Ghosts of Spiritwood, which is the first English edition of a French or of a, why a short YA novel that was originally published in French, Le Fantôme de Spiritwood, um, by a Regina French publisher. It's by Martine Noël Ma. She translated it. And this will be the first English edition. And it's almost ready. The interior is almost ready. Still have to uh, finish the cover. I have the cover art, which interestingly enough is partially, well, all, entirely AI generated, but compiled from a number of AI images. Um, and uh, have to do the print cover. So that means, you know, the barcode and the back cover copy and all that kind of stuff. Good morning. Whoever just said good morning. Marijuana, good morning. It's my first walk around the lake on a Friday morning in quite some time. And I can already tell I'm going to have to watch my footing because I suspect the path around the lake has also got big patches of ice on it. So that always adds a, a frisson to the goings on. Ooh la la. Let's just cross right over here because this sidewalk looks okay. I'm doing fine. How are you? It's like the well, of course, the clouds may be breaking up in the east, but the grayness is coming from the west. So, that little bit of broken cloud we see up there might actually get swallowed up. The other big project, the next book after The Ghost of Spiritwood was one called Small Reckonings, which uh, has been edited now. And uh, it's another reprint, but I always edit these things start to finish. So that's not too far in the future. 
I got a lot of stuff coming up from Shadowpaw Press. And I have stuff coming up from Endless Sky Books, which is the other publishing company I have, which is Hybrid Publishing, which is where the author invests money in the publication. Which is not something I never thought I'd get into, but... Hello? I'm trying to read it. Oh, Elmer. Yep, everything's fine with me. Welcome back. <laughs> we had all our really cold weather back in December, it seems like. We haven't had too many cold snaps, although we're going to finish off February with a reasonably cold one, it looks like. Okay, carefully down the stairs. At least they've been somewhat cleared. of ice right here. I guess I'll walk this way towards the ledge. It's always a little more scenic. Yeah, it's, uh, it's getting grayer, not breaking up more, of course, in the east as the clouds continue to move across the skies. So I don't think we'll see much in the way of Beautiful sky over there this morning. Well, this part is fairly cleared anyway. Albert Street Bridge. What flags have we got? Canadian, Saskatchewan, British. So no special events being commemorated at the moment. Was I say? Oh yes, in the sky books is my hybrid, which is where basically I'm offering my skills as a book publisher. I only accept some things. It's, it's still not accepting everything. I'm not just publishing stuff because people will pay me to publish it. Uh, I have only two. One has already been published, it's a little book of poetry called Wounded Hearts Take a Chance. And the other one, the next one is a Western novel. And I'd always try to make clear to the authors, the odds are you won't make back the money you spend on publishing your own work. I'll do what I can, but I can't promise making money. Because the last thing I want to do is take advantage of people. With that understanding, if they want to enlist me in my expertise, then I'm happy to help them out, assuming I think their book is worth publishing to begin with.
We'll go up this way towards the ledge. Oh yes, over there is the outdoor rink, which they set up for the Frost Festival. There's a bit of ice over there as well. Not much in the way of a garden at the moment, of course. Legislative building dead ahead. Almost, well, dead ahead, but not the middle, it's not quite dead ahead. Ooh, let's go through this since it's been cleared. How exciting! We will change sides. So then you can look both ways. You can look that way at downtown. Good morning, Kirk in Vancouver. And you can look this way at the ledge. Not quite centered. If I center it, I get this wire framework in the middle of the shot. My gimbal keeps sticking, pointing in one direction. This is all cleared over here too. Why is that? What were they doing over here during the Frost Festival? Is there more ice? No, it's just... It was just cleared to make a big open space. A big pile of snow in the middle. They were probably uh, tents or food stands or that sort of thing here. Again, I really should have gotten over here during the Frost Festival, but again, I didn't. Big pile of snow though. There's grass under here. It's hard to believe right now. I'm sure it was paved, but it's not. Paved and ice, I guess. Nope, yeah, definitely slippery in spots. Just a good view of the ledge. We'll go around this way. This little bit of broken cloud is rapidly disappearing over there. would be the east wing entrance down under there uh, I don't know if I can walk down by the uh, fountain or not not that it's fountain -y, but depends on how much the path has been beaten down otherwise I'll have to go that way which I could anyway, because I never go that way, so I don't know, just go that way. Doesn't look very promising walking wise there. Mr. Web Guy, it says.
Well, that'll take me out of my way, though. I'm sure I can get through here. People must have walked this way. Oh yeah, there's more of a path than it looked like. Couldn't tell because of the lack of contrast. The Trafalgar Fountain that once upon a time did indeed stand in Trafalgar Square in London. Well, when it was made, it must have been a 19th century thing probably. I don't know if the plaque says when it was made, just that it came here for the centennial of the RCMP, was it? I read that plaque a million times. Let's read it again. It's right here. Uh, it was honoring the establishment of the headquarters of the Northwest Mounted Police in 1882. That's all it says. It's put here in the 60s, but before that, I'm sure it was in Trafalgar Square. At least I've been saying that. <laughs> I hope it's true. <laughs> I'll have to check my own book. Historic Walks of Regina at Nooshaw, published by Red Deer Press. Quite out of date now. A lot of the buildings have been torn down since I wrote about them. I was drawing heavily on work that had been done by the Regina Historical Society, though I added what I could. Won a Municipal Heritage Award for it, which was nice. There's the uh, Connexus Art Center over there, Roberts Plaza, the apartment building sticking up there. change hands so I can warm up my right one. Even though it's not all that cold, it's cold enough and my gloves aren't all that. These are my warm, warm weather gloves. And I've got to keep watching my feet so I don't fall on an unexpected patch of ice or even an expected patch of ice. Whether you expect it or not, it's equally slippery. Morning. Red barrel there has sand in it, they're putting on the path. Sand and salt, probably. A little more memorial to the Genocide of Ukrainians by Russians under Stalin. This looks a little iffy. As it slopes down toward the lake and uh, snow melts and... Well, maybe it's better than I thought. I was thinking this was ice on this side, but I think this is the clear part. Anyway, wherever it slopes down like that, you get snow melting above it and then it runs down and then freezes. You always have to watch out for that kind of occurrence as you're walking. Here comes the old guys. Seem to be a regular group of them that walk around the lake on Fridays. Maybe every day, I don't know. I run into them on Fridays. Morning. 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 I'll see them again, most likely, on the other side of the lake. 
depending on where they started. If they started at the parking lot, they might be done before I get around there. Two months from now, it'll be mid-April. We won't have leaves yet, but the snow might be gone. Three months from now, the leaves will be coming out. Six months from now, it'll be the hottest part of the year. Nine months from now, it'll be snowing again. Morning. We have very distinct seasons here. See Spruce Island over there, which is a uh, wildlife res preserve, I guess. Not accessible to the public. There is a landing stage, but you're, you can't go camp and there's no picnic facilities or anything like that. And it's all overgrown, I would imagine, on the island itself. Not that I've ever been over there. A little bit of bird song here and there, but not a lot. That's not bad at all. It's been a lot worse than this. We haven't had any fresh snow to speak of. We had like a dusting a couple of days ago. We might get some more tomorrow, I hear. That's why everything looks so used. <laughs> it's not fresh snow, it's used snow. Old snow. Slightly perked up by that last dusting. If I look close, I can see it on the on the piles here. You can see there's a little fresh snow just on top. Whitened it up a bit. I almost wore my parka and then I realized I'd be way too warm. Oh, uh, what's that? Hello. Trying to read it. Moving to Regina very soon from Toronto. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, when you get here, welcome to Regina. Shiva, um, I think that says. Sorry, my eyes are not great for small print and especially with the white background. But I don't want to wear reading glasses as I walk around the lake. <laughs> it's just what I'd have to do to read the screen clearly all the time. I get quite a few people find this, these walks who are moving to Regina are often coming to school at the university. Whenever I walk around the university, that's always a popular walk. Gets lots of viewers. I've done that for a while either. Said, our second car is currently inoperative, so my wife takes the one car off to work and I'm on foot, so I don't go any further afield than walking out the front door on these walks. Next week she'll be away and I'll have the car, so I might uh, try to get a little further out somewhere to my next week. Just, you know, shake things up a bit. Although the other constraint is I'm so overloaded with projects that need doing that I begin, begin to resent the hour that I go out to do these much as I enjoy doing them I do sometimes have to say you have to do it 
And some days that doesn't work, like yesterday when I didn't go out because I felt... Actually, that was supposed to say, no, yesterday I went downtown. Never mind. No, they, oh, I can't remember now. I missed one day. I guess it was Wednesday I missed, and then I went downtown again yesterday. I guess that's how that worked. Every walk downtown is different because I never follow exactly the same path, and the weather keeps changing, but still. I do feel I walk down there rather a lot compared to anywhere else. But you know, if you only live 20 minutes from downtown, of course you're going to walk down there quite a bit. In a bigger city, we'd be living downtown as close as we are, but it's not considered part of downtown. Ooh, I didn't see that patch at all. It almost got me as a result. Hey, going down the hill here is always something to be careful of. Try to pick out the directions uh, for sure and walk carefully. The ice does play a factor too. I'm less excited about walking <laughs> because of the ice. And when it's really cold, of course, that's another reason to think, you know, I don't really have to go out. I can just sit at home with a cup of coffee in a nice warm living room by the fire with my computer and work. And never set foot outside when it's 30 below. So that definitely plays into it sometimes as well. Speaking of downtown, there it is. Facebook was commenting on they lived down the state somewhere and they'd had three or four inches of snow, so there was a snow day for the kids. Snow days are not something you get in Saskatchewan. The only time school buses don't run if it gets 35, 40 below. I smell open water. Sure enough, there's some patches out there. Because the vegetation is rotting underneath. Nice. There's water under there. It opens up. It's a, you smell it. Uh, it gets to you know, 35 or 40 below. There's concern about the buses on the starting. Then school buses, especially in rural areas, will not run. Effectively, that keeps kids from going to school, but the schools themselves don't close usually. They're open so that anybody that does get there warm place to be. So snow days just starting to think here on the northern prairies. My daughter never missed a day of school because of weather that I can think of. <laughs> school was always open and we lived close enough we could get her there, so off she went. Elementary school, it was walking distance. High school is a 10 minute drive at the most. Probably less on a good day. <laughs> Now she's at the University of Toronto and within walking distance of the camp. Down the block from where she lives, so. She gets to classes there too. Okay, past them already further back. Arts Center over there. 
morning. No, that was a different pair than the ones I passed earlier. Next bridge is coming up over there. That's uh, Broad Street ahead of us, or West Canada Parkway down here, I should say. It's about a five kilometer loop around the lake. You might add another one from the distance from my house to the lake and back again. So these walks are about five to six kilometers for me. And a very popular walk it is. There's always people walking around the lake. I've rarely been entirely alone. Last year when it was minus 34 and I risked it. I don't think I crossed the past few, but I should have people. She's walking over there and she has spikes on the mountains. In which case, yeah, I think that's exactly what's going on. I think she has some sort of uh, traction devices on her boots. So walking on the bare pavement is actually worse in that circumstance. I've never tried those. Mostly I'm going back and forth between pavement and ice. And I don't know how that would work. If it would actually be any safer or not. All right, now we're looking west across the lake, back to where we came from. The house is in that direction, which is where we're headed. Walk subject to icing, you don't say. Well, it certainly has iced here. There's the uh, Moscana Bridge, Broad Street Bridge. I think they called it the Broad Street Bridge, even though this is Moscana Parkway, I think. I know, you drive on a parkway, you park in a driveway. English is weird that way. There's the bridge, another view of the lake. Not too exciting this morning. White and gray, slightly brown, but it reads as black to gray itself. So not a lot of color. Next highlight is the marina. Ooh, I saw that patch of ice and my foot still slipped on it. Took too enthusiastic a step. It's all about center of gravity and friction and lack thereof. your center of gravity firmly in the center helps and one way to do that is by taking shorter steps and of course the shorter steps also reduce the forward momentum of your foot which reduces the potential for sliding however if it slides off to the side that doesn't necessarily do you any good your foot can slip off to one side or another if you find yourself on a little hill of ice and then you just have to catch yourself, hopefully. That's why the time or two I fought, well, the only time I really fell hard on here was well over a year ago now, the first snow of 2021 on November 11th. I uh, fell at the end of someone's driveway on the ice. I went down pretty hard. Didn't break anything, I was fine, but you can go watch that if you want. November 11th, 2021. I don't remember how far along. It'd be fairly far along in the walk, but down I went. <laughs> and then I had to restart the speed because it went dead, which must have looked alarming to anyone following me. This is Bar Willow. It has a deck with a tent on it. I think you can eat outside even in the winter, should you wish to. shortcut here since it's plowed. And beaten down. Kind of.
kind of. It's a little rough now to get this in. Ooh, nasty ice there too. That's, uh, well, maybe it's not as bad as it looks. Okay, anyway, I avoided it nevertheless. Playground, not getting at the moment. And the uh, canoe club, the rowing club, it's based along here. And often in the summer when I walk by in the mornings, there'll be kids here because they're taking part in the summer camp, rowing on the lake. Most of their boats are in the shed, I would think. This, uh, this boat is part of the uh, Oscana Center fleet. It may be the Wascanda Center Fleet. I don't know if there's another one somewhere or not. If they need a boat, there's their boat. Arr. There's your boat, matey. And there's the legislative building again. Arr. Is it Talk Like a Pirate Day yet, or have I missed it? Our every day is Talk Like a Pirate Day. Morning. Another familiar face from the walks around the lake. Talked to him a couple of times. I don't know why that's the stereotypical way of pirates talking. I think it goes back to, my guess is, it goes back to the guy that played Long John Silver in uh, the TV series, kids TV series Treasure Island, which I still remember. And I, I think it was a Disney show and I think he had played Long John Silver in the Disney version of Treasure Island. Can't remember his name though. But he talked like that, and that may very well be where most of the stereotypical pirate talk comes from. Which is a kind of a legacy. I'm sure he's long dead. Still, if that's true, I don't know if it's true, but it could be true. Maybe something has outlived him, hasn't it? All right, well, if we look this way, there'll be a fountain there. Downtown in that direction. And again, there's actually some open water out there. There's some sort of outflow that thaws up a spot here when it's not too cold. And there's the ledge, and my house is right in that direction. So let's get on. Get to work. I haven't really done any work yet this morning. Get the latest outreaches on Twitter. It's the main reason to be on Twitter is to be outraged, as far as I can tell. Not that there isn't plenty to be outraged about. It gets tiring. And I suspect I was every bit as outrageous back when I was a kid, just didn't have Twitter. Had the same reactions. Well, maybe when I was a kid, but later on. I actually think from a writer's point of view, the worst thing about social media is that it gives you too much insight into your favorite authors. I mean, I try not to be provocative, although there are a few things that I will speak up about, like free speech issues. It's important to me as a writer. But, uh, you know, there's people whose books you thought you liked and you find out what idiots they are. 
I think it's enough to say, you know, I'm just going to read this next book, or the next book, but I don't think I will. So I don't see how that helps. Now, I suppose there are people who totally agree with what I read, from my point of view, stupid thing they're saying, and think, oh, there are clearly people of enlightenment who agree with me, therefore I will read the books. And maybe if I did more, what's it called, an outreach from I could build a readership of people who shared my outrage about various things, but I would also maybe meet people who don't, so hard to know which is the better course of action. In general, I'm not even so much as a writer, not so much as a writer, but as a publisher, if a book is well written, I am unlikely to not publish it because I disagree with parts of it. I wouldn't say never. One of the things about being a publisher is you get to decide, but in general, I'm, I try hard not to judge things like that. I try to judge it on the writing. I'm sure probably judge it on whether I can sell a lot of copies, but so far I failed to sell a lot of copies of anything, so it doesn't seem like something to uh, build into my calculations too much. So when it comes to marketing, that's the big challenge for everybody, discoverability, and I, I don't think I'm good at it. I'd like to be better, but I'm so busy publishing stuff, it's hard to work on those professional development aspects of the job. But maybe when I get this current writing project, I will build that into my time as well. You know, spend an hour a day on some learning thing about how to use social media better or best practices for paid advertising for books. Because I sure would like, not sure for my own books, but I sure would like to be able to sell more books for the authors I publish as well. And I have a have a publicist, a very good publicist, who helps out, but I can't tell that anything that happens in that interview review field, I can't tell that any of it sells books. So but buy my books, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Please, if you watch these videos, buy my books. Or buy my books I publish at Shadowpaw Press or in the Sky Books. I have my own online shop, edwardwelletshop.com. All my books published by Daw Books, my major publisher, of course, available everywhere, Amazon or any other online store. The books I publish through Shadowpaw Press are available online pretty much everywhere. They're audio books. So, you know, help me out here, fellas. I got 720 subscribers. If every one of you bought a book, that'd be great. <laughs> if you bought 10 books, that'd be even better. And I'm only 200 now, 280 subscribers away from making money on this YouTube channel. So tell your friends and your enemies to subscribe. Once I get a thousand subscribers, I'll make a few bucks, very few bucks, like maybe a cup of coffee a week if I'm lucky, but still it's a start. They already put ads on them. I just don't get any money from it. I do a lot of creative stuff. Monetizing it, I have not been particularly successful at. There's uh, Willow Island. Speaking of books, Shards of Excalibur Young Adult Fantasy Series starts right here. I recommend those books. They're out of new print editions from Shadowpaw Press. And there's even an Omnibus ebook edition you could uh, get if you wanted to read them all at once. 
in ebook format, and that's a very cheap way to get them. I'll take the uh, shortcut here, since it's all beaten down nicely now. I think it was the last time I was here. So I'll avoid the old guys who are now coming up there that I passed earlier. <laughs> I hear a lot of construction noises coming from the new swimming pool. One of the suggestions for, you know, selling or marketing books is start a YouTube channel. Well, I did that. Can't tell that it's moved any books, but you never know. I can't really tell what sells books and what doesn't. Hello, uh, Stefan. Yeah, I'm doing fine. Videos have been there. Uh, I took a week, weekish off when I was in Seattle. I didn't uh, do any walking with the camera there because it's just a little weird in a strange city and you don't know what interactions you might have. But uh, doing at least four a week, I think. more if you count the uh, two parters as two videos as opposed to one split down the middle yesterday i just posted them as the two parters i didn't bother splicing them together increasingly i'll probably do that i'm streaming at a higher resolution than i did at one point because uh, facebook now seems to be supporting the 1080 which before it was only 720 And so it's streaming on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. I would add, the only other one I might be able to add would be LinkedIn. I don't think I can do that with this software, though. Now, when I start my new podcast, which I'm going to do sometime soon, um, that's going to be a video-based one, unlike my current podcast, which will continue, The World Shapers, which is a in-depth, hour-long audio podcast. The video one will be shorter and focused more on uh, new releases. Um, and it'll be called Handheld Dreams, Authors and Their Books. I'm working on finding the music I want for it, and then I'll have to create opening and closing credits, I think. And then uh, I'm going to do that one on Restream where I can stream it to, at the level of plan I'm going to have, five channels simultaneously, and I've only got four to stream it to, so. And that will show up here on my channel as well, so if you subscribe, you will get notified when that goes live as well, I think. Pretty sure. Eh, a little bit of broken light up there. Not too much. Not quite as gray as I thought it was going to be. morning. Joggers, bingo. That's another thing I, I haven't done yet that I've talked about doing is a uh, bingo card. <laughs> Great. Well, that makes one listener or viewer then. <laughs> I'd like to start it before the end of the month, but I'm not sure I'm going to manage that because the end of the month is coming up really quick. And the more important is that i got to get the new Kickstarter going for Shapers of Worlds Volume 4. I think I have all the pieces. I just have to do the work of uh, putting it together.
I think everybody who's going to provide me with a uh, backers reward among my authors has probably done so. There's a couple that I'm still waiting to hear from. I should follow up one more time before I pull the trigger on this. Because you have to build your backer rewards levels. Write some copy about the book. I list bios of all the authors involved. And what your goal is, which will probably be 12,000 Canadian, which is what it was last year. It's probably less than I need, but um, much more likely to make a lower amount. You don't get any money on Kickstarter unless you make your make your uh, goal. And if I make twelve thousand, I can cover. Basically, the paying the authors and printing the books and shipping them. Especially this year, because I have a slightly fewer authors, so the length is shorter, which means somewhat lower costs. Anyway, it's close enough that if I can get the 12,000, I'm okay. The books then sell forever. Not a lot, but... Even, the, you know, the first one is still selling, occasionally two, three years in. Volume two is selling several copies a month. They're, they all sell several copies a month which on Amazon, which uh, doesn't add up to a lot of money, but it adds up to some, and over time, even a little adds up to a lot, so. All right, well, we're heading now back up to the uh, tunnel under the bridge, and then just a couple of blocks to home, where I will make more coffee first thing, have something to eat. Here comes the tunnel. Here comes the tunnel. Here comes the tunnel. Another example of how old I am. That was a Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In reference. <laughs> used to be very common. Here comes the judge. Here comes the judge. What are in the courtroom? Here comes the judge. Everybody knew what that was from. Probably not true anymore. Uh, how many citizens does Regina have? Um, I think we're at about 230, 250,000, somewhere between there, probably. I think that's right. other side because this sidewalk looks clear at least for this little bit not so much up here where I'm going to walk though but oh well house with the lions on the steps yeah it's actually not nice at all along this sidewalk so I'm going to Avoid this next little patch of it. Pure smooth sheet of ice under the pine trees there. Oof. I'm always tempted to go that way, but I know it's a dead end, so.
Angus Boulevard. Pretty much exactly. It's a pretty good size. I mean, we have everything. Yet you can get around quickly from place to place. International airports, you can fly other places, although connections aren't great necessarily. But especially since Air Canada is cutting service in Calgary. If you want to fly to Calgary from here on Air Canada, you'll be flying to Vancouver and then back to Calgary, which is nuts. There you go. WestJet, our other main service provider, is putting in more flights to Calgary as a result of that. But we always fly on Air Canada for points reasons. We'll be going to Calgary this summer for when words collide. But we'll drive for that. It's about a seven and a half hour drive from here. With the stop for a couple of stops. Because if you drove straight through, you could do it faster. But you wouldn't want to drive straight through. At least I wouldn't. Not at my age. So if you wanted to go to Banff, or just get to the Rockies, it's about another hour from that. So seven and a half, eight and a half hours due west and you're in the mountains. And then if you're going to the west coast, you're in the mountains a long time. There's nothing but mountains between you and the west coast and valleys. Almost home. Oh, ouch. All right, I'll stop here. So, thanks for walking with me. And uh, I, tomorrow's quite busy. I don't know if I'll make it back on tomorrow or not. Maybe Sunday. Monday for sure. Anyway, see you again soon.